Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister. The message reads like this. Hello brother Nanshi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? So brother Nanshi, it was in the year 2015. That was when I met the man who later became my husband. From the moment that we started talking with each other because we met on a farm here in South Africa, it was obvious that we were like meant for each other. He loved me and I loved him the same. So we then started talking and when we were staying together, like each and every time, our discussions were all about stuff about how we will be able to make money in this foreign land that we were in. We will think about so many business plans that we thought that will give us some money, but each and every business plan that we would have, even though we would think that we were going to succeed, but it needed some money so that we can kick off the business. But still, we did not come out with any business that could give us what we called quick money. We did not even want to be in business like for a very long time, not making any profit. We wanted a business that we could like start today, and by the end of the day, we will be filthy rich. This is what we used to do, me and my husband. Since we were working on the farms, so we were not like working at the same farm where we were staying. We had to walk for about 25 minutes or more. So as we will be walking, as the white people will be driving fast with their cars, my husband used to say, I just wish one of them would have an accident because we used to hear people saying that they always travel with a lot of cash in their cars. So he was like, if we are lucky enough that when we are walking to work, then one of these white people will have an accident and just let's say that maybe they will be having a lot of cash in their car, then we'll be able to get, to get that cash and start a business, then we can be rich. Sometimes when we will be walking, then if we would see like a black plastic bag thrown by the side of the road me and my husband we would go and open that plastic bag one day we even opened up this plastic bag thinking that there was money but it was filled it was filled with human poo we don't know what really happened maybe the person had done the poo in the car then just dumped we don't know my husband just opened and he was like yikes there is no money in here it's just poo and we kept on hoping that maybe when we were walking around, we'll find a huge sum of money that the thieves, because we thought that maybe one day the thieves will enter at any of the farmhouse that were nearby, then rob the people, and then they would steal a lot of cash. And when they were running away, then they would drop the cash. Then luck will be on our side, we'll be able to pick up the cash. That is how dangerous me and my husband it became. We just wanted like quick money. We did everything that we were told by a lot of prophets that if you go and you visit a white garment prophet having the white woman's hair, if you get the strands of her hair, then any white person that you will be working for will be pouring money, giving you a lot of money. We tried it, but as for me and my husband, we found out that it was not working. My husband, it then happened that our boss started complaining and he was like, I need you to have a driver's license because... If you do not have a driver's license, then I'm going to hire someone because I cannot be here at all the times. I just need someone who has a driver's license. So you have to go back to Zim to get a driver's license. So my husband then rushed back home and got his driver's license. So Brother Nashi, after my husband had gone to get his driver's license, while he was there, my husband then said that he had gone and paid this other traditional healer a visit. And he had been given this other small container bottle that was full of lucky charms that was going to assist him so that when he will be driving around, he will be able to pass through different roadblocks without being asked a lot of questions and being favored by our boss so that our boss can give us a lot of money. We did not know that with each and every ritual that we were performing, behind each and every ritual there was a price that you have to pay, even if the healer does not tell you immediately that there is a price to be paid. We were being given money, Brother Nashi, by this white man that we were working for. It was a lot of money. It was like a big increase on our salary. And we thought that it was far much better that me and my husband, we try to even start our own small business. 
then there was this other time before we had stopped working for our boss. My husband had been sent to Hauteng to collect some stuff by our former boss to use on the form. Then I asked, then I started to hear that there was a easing sound that was coming from underneath the bed. So being on the forms immediately, I said, this sound, it is a snake because I had heard it before, but never in our room. We used to see a lot of these snakes outside, but never indoors. So Brother Nasha, I immediately called my husband and I said, I know that there is a snake underneath the bed. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I am scared. Then my husband said, okay, do not panic. Let me call the boss, but do not do anything. I waited for him and I waited. He called me about... Ten minutes later, when he called me, that he then said that he had spoken with the traditional healer. He said that the traditional healer had said that I was not supposed to panic, for that which was underneath our bed was not going to harm me. It was there to protect me. It was like our child now. I fell fast asleep, and when I fell fast asleep, I then had a dream, and I saw myself in that dream. I was playing with a snake. It was a puff adder, a very fat one that I was playing with. Like, I am someone that is afraid of snakes. I do not like snakes, no matter what, I hate snakes. But I was there, playing with a snake in my dreams, and the snake then said, How much money do you want? This is what the snake said. How much do you want, mommy? And I will give it to you. I said to the snake, Can you give me about 7,000 rands? Will it be fine? And the snake said, only that, that is nothing. The next morning when I woke up, I found out that the snake, indeed, it had vomited money. There was money that was just lying everywhere. I then told my husband, he then said, do not even sweep the room, do not even touch the money until I am there. When my husband came, then the traditional healer told us that each and every time that this snake vomits money for us, you have to take like the lowest banknote that it would have vomited, like at that time, my husband took a 10 rent knot, then he wiped his back area using that 10 rent knot. So that is what we do each and every time. If it vomits, let's say, 200 and 100 rent knots, then you have to take the 100 rent knot, then you wipe your back area. At that time, I don't want to lie to you, we thought that finally we had made it in life. It was like the best times of our lives. We were now enjoying life. Our boss was shocked when we told him that we did not want to work on his farm anymore. Because as for me, I told my husband that it was so much better that we ran, ran away from our boss at night. But my husband then said, no, when you have not stolen anything from someone, you do not run away. You tell the person that the reason as to why you do not want to work for them, it is because you are tired of getting paid peanuts. So my husband then spoke with our former boss and told him that, you used to give us peanuts, but now we do not want to work for you anymore. That is how we stopped working for our boss and we started staying in the city. Uh, when we were staying in the city, it was in a gated community. That was when we had an emergency call from Zim, the traditional Ila said, My children, come, come here. You have to return back home. We then returned and we went straight to his village. We saw that the old man was not okay, he was sick. He said, My children, has this money, has this snake of mine given you money? And we said, yes. And he said, it is time for you to return to me what belongs to me. He said that he wanted us to give him the snake back. We refused, Brother Nash. We said, no, with the way that life is right now, we are just getting started. We cannot give you this snake back. Is there anything that you can do for us? Uh, we negotiated with him and he said that if we wanted, we had to sacrifice our daughter so that the snake will be able to communicate with us directly. We can have a direct contract with the snake, even if something were to happen. Hey, it was really painful. I don't want to lie. Then we said, is it not possible for us to use my sister's daughter? I had to make that difficult decision of sacrificing my sister's daughter and it was quite easy because ever since my sister had came to South Africa, her daughters were staying at my house. We returned back to the village and we took her and we went with her to the traditional healer's place and he went with us to the graves where they buried their relatives and then we stripped her naked. Then there were 15 buckets of cold water. This ritual was done at 3 a.m. in the morning and it was very cold. I felt so sorry for my sister's child, but what had to be done had to be done. Uh, that is how we sacrificed her, Brother Nashim. Uh, this young girl, even though she has not yet passed away, but I feel so sorry for her because of what 
is happening in her womb. This snake, it has made her womb to become more like its own nest. By the time that she will be growing up, she won't be able to conceive because she will start to develop these fibroids. This is my story, Brother Nash.